Amen, amen. We come this far by faith. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Amani Temple of Temecula, Church of God in Christ. Powerful living uh, Sunday school class. Today is February the 11th, and um, your teacher for today is myself, uh, Elder Madison Farrar. Um, our subject on today is uh, faith in the fiery furnace. And uh, we'll be coming from Daniel today, uh, chapter 3. So we'll be in Daniel chapter 3. Uh, we have a lot of scriptures today, but we're going to start at verse 19 up until uh, 28. And our key text for today will be found in Daniel 3 and 28. Uh, and then it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we'll read the rest as we go along. So let's open up with a uh, word of prayer. Father, we thank you on this morning for your goodness and your mercies unto us. We thank you, Lord, for how you watched over us all night long. And you stay the hand of death from our doorstep. And we bless your wonderful name on today. It is a beautiful day outside. This is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, bless us on today. We thank you for your presence being with us even right now. And we pray, oh God, that you would bless everyone in the classroom, those that are coming, those that are on um, the media. We just bless your wonderful name. And we pray for those that are also going to join in and listen later on. That that, Lord, that you would move on behalf of the saints of God everywhere, whatever the need is on today. We pray that you would touch the sick and the afflicted. Remember the bereaved, God. Encourage those that are discouraged. Make a way for those who need a way made, God. And we just pray that you would save, deliver, and set the captive free. Amen. Be encouraged because God is with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen and amen. <clears throat> All righty, so we're going to go ahead and uh, remind you that we are in still yet in the winter quarter. Uh, we're continuing with faith that praises God, faith that praises God. And uh, we're yet in unit number three, talking about the righteous uh, that live by faith. And so um, the righteous are those that are set apart for God's service. The righteous are considered those that adhere to, that cleave to, that cling to the high morals principles that are laid out in the word of God. The righteous are those that are dedicated or consecrated to God. So again, the righteous live by faith. And we also talked a lot about faith, uh, being trusting in God, having confidence in God. Just relying on God, know that whatever God's word says, we take him at face value and believe it and act on it. So uh, we have faith today. Again, the subject is faith in the fiery furnace. And for the biblical definition of faith, we go to Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So this lesson today is going to demonstrate, be another example about how to live by faith. And again, the righteous, uh, God calls us to live by faith, to trust him. And again, our faith is just moving with God as he moves upon us, not seeing where he's bringing us or what he may want to accomplish in us, but believing that he has, as Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, plans for us and plans for us to prosper. So we thank God for faith in the fiery furnace. And again, the fiery is going to be the intense fire uh, that we have. And we'll talk about a furnace, uh, how the furnace looked in those days as we get on in the lesson. So we got a lot to do today. Um, and uh, so just hang with us. Uh, we'll start out a little slow, then I'm going to be speeding up. <laughs> so make sure you catch up with us. All righty. So again, uh, after this lesson, we're going to hopefully... Uh, be able to name the children, no, not children, they're not children, they were men, name the three uh, persons whom God rescued from the fiery furnace. Uh, some of you already know that. Um, but two, summarize the reasons for Nebuchadnezzar's change in his attitude, and they commit to bearing, being a faithful witness to God. Uh, and when you face your personal fiery furnace. So uh, in our lesson today, faith is going to be tested. So our lives are always tested uh, when we're committed, by the way, to trusting God. So here we go. 
Daniel 3. Again, if you're just joining us, good morning and welcome. We're in Daniel uh, chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Then was uh, Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his facade was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one time, seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosens, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Verse 22, therefore, because the king commanded it, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, um, no, sorry, verse 23, and then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And then verse 24, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast these men, the uh, three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, true, O king. Verse 25, he answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst, came forth out of the midst of the fire. And the priests, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their clothes changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Last verse, 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. All righty, so we're going to go ahead and again, if you're just joining us, welcome and good morning. We are in Daniel, the, uh, the third book of Daniel, talking about faith in the fiery furnace. Uh, a lot of people know the story of the three Hebrew guys. But uh, the today's lesson introduces us to these guys, Hebrew men, who were under uh, the king's leadership. And they were in Babylon, and their faith was greatly tested on today. But they stood the test, and they refused uh, to worship the image of uh, that he, that the king Nebuchadnezzar had, he had erected. They had confidence, and so some of these words I need you to pick up if I'm stressing them. They had confidence that the Lord was going to be with them. And so again, when I'm speaking of them, I want you to also uh, uh, pick up some of the key words because this is what we are to do. We are to have confidence. We are to have faith in trusting God no matter what, how the fiery furnace, uh, our own fiery furnace trial may be. Um, so the question is, do you have the faith in God? Do you have that confidence that he is with you, knowing that he is with you uh, in your trials? So our setting today, we're in, they're in Babylon. Uh, the characters are the Israelites, uh, the Jewish nation that was brought into captivity. Uh, so they were living in a foreign land. So when the Babylonians came to uh, get the Israelites, uh, they took uh, many people with them, but they also chose young, talented, or talented young people to go with them to serve the king. So like the cream of the crop, you know. Uh, so in this group that they took that um, 
was some of the talented young men was Daniel and his three counterparts, or I shouldn't say his counterparts, but I'll just go ahead and use that for lack of word, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in the leadership uh, role. So um, in, prior to our lesson on today, the king had erected... Um, um, I think pride set in, no, I shouldn't say think, pride set in and he figured he's going to go ahead and erect this large uh, image um, and he had a big celebration inviting different officials and people all to the dedication of this image and he brought them there so that they could celebrate but also worship, okay, that image and anyone that refused to worship the image knew that death was involved. And so the death was to be thrown into the burning furnace. And so that's why we get to our lesson on today. So um, um, some of them, <clears throat> some people of the Chaldeans, when they had already um, uh, blown the trumpets or whatever and everybody was bowing down, they noticed that these three men were not bowing down and they kind of uh, you know, went and told the king all about this that uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was ignoring his rules. They weren't going to, they didn't bow down and serve uh, his idol like they were uh, commanded to do. So now it brings us in our lesson today where our verse 19, so again, if you're just joining us, we're in Daniel chapter three, we're in verse 19. And again, we're talking about faith in the fiery furnace. So I just gave you some background because today doesn't give you that background information. It's just talking about now Nebuchadnezzar was mad. He was full of fury. So he's uh, he's steaming hot. You know, you ever get like that where people just have you rise up and you're just mad now. You just pass angry. You're just ready to attack. And his, you know, his facade, his facial thing uh, 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 changed as well. And, you know, our face, you know, our face, we can be smiling, let us know people, let people know we're happy, we're excited, you know, or we're mad or we're blooming hot too. So it's all in the face. So again, the king, so the king called him, he's mad. He wanted to see these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And again, they were in leadership too. So of course, some people are jealous of you and they want to, hey, let's tell on them. Why get rid of them? So maybe I could have a position. Of course, the Bible doesn't say that, but we know from people, you know, from living experiences, how some people don't like certain people in leadership and they want that job. So, so the king called them. And, uh, and gave them, again, this is prior to our lesson on today, gave them another opportunity or chance. He told them to bow down or else they're going to be thrown in the blazing fire. All right, so they answered, we're not careful to answer you. All right, or in other words, it's not necessary for us to answer you concerning this because we already didn't bow down. We're not going to bow down. And so, of course, now the king is blooming hot. So heat the furnace, as he said, one time, seven times more than it wanted to heat. In other words, sort of like just crank it up to the highest level. So you ever, if you have a heater in your house or, you know, your furnace or whatever, you turn it up to 70 or 80 or whatever. So he wanted it at the highest that it was going to go to so it could be burning hot. And then, um, and then he was ready, boldly stated that, and, um, you know, the, they boldly stated God's servant. So again, we're talking about the people of God and faith. They said, boldly stated that God was going to basically deliver them. But if he wasn't, okay, they also said, uh, but if not, let it be known that we will not serve nor worship, you know, your golden image. Okay, and that's what led to all of this. So in other words, we, I repeated that, we as the uh, people of God also need to have that boldness because when we receive the spirit of God, we also receive the boldness. And if we don't know that we're bold, we could always ask God to make us a little more bolder than we need to be because now is the time we need to stand up, as I said, and be counted. 
The people of God need to let the world know that there are servants of the Most High God who are not uh, adhering to the worldly rules, that we're not going to stand by, that we're praying, that we're fasting, that we're going to speak up when we can against what's wrong. And no matter what the consequences are, be willing to take them. And so that's what they was. So he wanted it heated. So in verse 20, I'm not going to read all of it over again. We read it if you came on a little bit later or something. Again, we're in Daniel 3, 19 through 28. I'm just at uh, verse 20. So he commanded his uh, most mighty men, those that had the physical strength and power, to um, take uh, these three men and cast them into the fiery furnace. So why he got the mighty men, not sure. I don't know was it, well, you know, if he thought that they were going to fight the fight. But if someone boldly says, you know, I'm not bowing down, you know, I'm not going to serve, kill me or whatever, I'm sure they weren't going to fight about it. But anyway, he had these men uh, to uh, cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Verse 21. Now notice that it says, okay, furnace in those days, the layout in ancient Egypt, they said, was made of clay, brooks, or stone. And it was consisting of at least two chambers or two parts, the main room and a fire chamber and a flue. So a duct for the smoke and everything like you would have for your chimneys and stuff, uh, for your fireplaces. So it was a large furnace, in other words, that can hold at least these three men that were going in. It was able to hold them. And then verse 21 talks about the men being bound. They had their, in other words, they had their coats, their hose, and everything, all their garments in, and they threw it in. So now why bring up their garments, what kind of clothing they had on? It sort of mentions that in Persian, uh, the Persian style uh, clothing was flammable, <laughs> you know, so easily to burn. So in other words, so when they threw them in, the, fi the, the fire would immediately tack those clothing that they had on and uh, catch them on, uh, get them on fire. So the heated response we're going into now, if you have any questions or comments, we do have some time, so please, uh, uh, right now we do. If, if you want to say something, uh, kind of, you know, join in, that'll be fine. Um, but uh, so then we're going on to verse uh, 23, 22. So and then it says, because the, king, the king's commandment was so urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot and would flame. So what did it do? The flame do? It, it killed who? The mighty men. The mighty men, his men. His men. Now, there's always a distinction between the people of God and the people of the world. So the world people got burnt just being there trying to throw them in, which means it was the fire. there was fire in there because some people said, well, there was no fire in the furnace. That's why they didn't burn. You know, someone's always trying to look for an excuse. But it had to be because, in other words, how did the three men you know, get their self burnt. All right, so acknowledge that there was, it wasn't just a furnace, but there was fire in there. And the word of God uh, clearly says, the flame of the fire slew, killed, destroyed, wiped out those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So, but these three men, the Bible says, God's servants, right, fell down bound into the midst. Right? So they got those three. Now notice the significance, okay? So uh, <clears throat> his mighty men were slew, but the three men of God were just in, fell down bound. So they were bound, locked up, right? And um, thrown in. But now, the next part is the good part. Verse 24, the king is watching. He's, now he's astonished. He's like, oh, I can't believe this, you know? What's going on? He got up out of his seat or wherever he was, rose up in haste, and spoke to his counselors and all of that, saying he was filled with kind of shock and emotion. And of course, wouldn't you be if you uh, threw in three men and they just lay in there bound in the fire? Wouldn't you be surprised about that? So he got up talking to his counselors that were there. Because remember, it was a whole group of people there because they were celebrating and worshiping the idol. And so 
He said, did not we cast three men bound, right? Bound. That's what the enemy wants to do with you. That's what sin does to you. It binds you up, right? But didn't we send these three bound into the midst of the fire? Of course, they're going to answer and say what? Yes. Yeah, they were there. So they were witnesses to what had taken place. They're answering the king. Yes, you threw it. Yeah, you're right. If three guys went in there. But he said, verse 25, three women were throw, thrown in. But the good part is, he answered, and lo, I see. How many men now? Four. Four. And what are they? Now they're loose. So before we come to Christ, we bound it and sin. Then when we get in Christ, he what? Looses us. He frees us from this. So he answered, and lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So the point here to me is that as you're going through, we're talking about faith. If you're just coming in and joining us, faith in the fiery furnace. So the point to me is this. We're going to continue to trust God and have faith in God and depend on God in the midst of our fiery furnaces, in the midst of our trials and tribulations, when we're going through the heatness and the intensity of it, we're going to have faith in God. We're going to continue on God because the good thing about it is because we may be going in, we may feel like we're bound and locked in the situation. But when Jesus steps in, he's coming to set us free, right? We got the victory. You know, we're in that midst. They were in the fire, but they had the victory, right? Because if they didn't have the victory, they'd have burnt up like the other ones. Right? So be encouraged in God because that's why faith is so important because we're trusting in God. And if you trust in God, he will see you through. Not maybe, not might. He will bring you through. Amen? So his divine presence stepped in. Okay? And they were amazed at the presence that was in there with them and that the men were still alive. Okay? Questions, comments? Nope. All right, let's keep going. So the pre-existing one stepped in, and we know who that was, because it could be nobody but God that stepped in. And so we're at verse 26. We're moving right along in the fiery furnace so that all could see. Now, it's as we go through these trials and tribulations and everything, everything works together for what? What, what does scripture is that? Romans, <laughs> Romans 8 and 28, and it says what? And we know that all things. Okay, so they said all things, and we know, the word says, and we know that all things work together for the good. But it's only for what? For those that, that love God and are called according to his purpose. So this is not for you if you're not in God. If you don't have God as your personal savior, then all things are not going to work for your good. I can't speak on that. Yes? Uh, one thing I think is important to point out here is that there wasn't uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Benjamin didn't make this about themselves. They constantly were trying to make sure that they were in Okay, just let me repeat that before I get to the next one. So he was saying uh, through their trial, their fiery, uh, tri while their faith was being tested, okay, they, did, they gave the glory and the honor back to God. Okay, they didn't make it about their self. They didn't have no pity party. They glorified God. And this may have infuriated Nebuchadnezzar the more because at that particular time, he was the God, I guess, the little God. And so that infuriated him. Okay, Elder, um, <laughs> the Elder Robinson's first, no. and then we'll get to it. But I think for us oh. today, and we want to bring it up today, it lets us know by our faith, we do not have to bow, you know, for us today. You know, this was back in uh, uh, 26th or 7th AD, but for us today. And, and we got challenges too, and we see challenges from every wind today. So it let us know, even though in some situations that we even have today, we still don't have to bow to a man or a person. Okay. 
So he was saying that even today as we're going through, just remember, we don't have to bow down. Just like they didn't have to bow down, don't throw up your hands. Don't give in the towel. Don't say, that I had it. I'm walking away. God is dead. He don't hear me or whatever. Hang in there. Okay, keep your faith going. Elder Robs? I just want to say that with this lesson, it goes right back to what uh, Assistant Pastor had talked about back, back then. It's, it's keep this in focus. Is that even though all this is going on, all elements are still controlled by God. That's right. The king is in his hands. The body of the king, the fire, those that have died, everything is still in his hands. The very oven that was made was made by elements from, that God provided. So even the very fire itself, is still not because everything still belongs to God. So regardless of what the enemy tries to do to you, you are still in his hands regardless. The very ground, the shoes, the clothes, the lights, everything, it just all belongs to God. Okay, so let me repeat that first. I'll get to you for yeah. So he was saying everything is in God's hands. Uh, the kings, uh, uh, everything, the clothing, the, the, the furnace, everything. God is aware of everything in your situation, what you're going through. And there's nothing too hard, the Bible says. There's nothing too hard for him. He created everything. So we can trust and rely on someone that has all these capacities and power and authority. And we don't have to bow down and give up and throw in the towel. Hang in there. God is in control of everything. Yeah. Elder Solomon. And, and I'm going to stand for this one. Because it was, it was all their active faith that never the judge's faith was changed. So a lot of the change that we need to see, uh, the application of the word, a lot of the change that we need to see in our, in our civil leaders, our national leaders, our state leaders, if we would stand in our faith, the fiery furnace that's there, we would see these leaders change. But it requires us to stand in faith and not abandon, not run, not bow down, but stand in faith. And God can meet us in that fiery furnace. Exactly. All right, so it's important to stand in the faith because people are watching you. Just as he said that as those uh, Hebrew men, three Hebrew men decreed and declared who God was and what they was going to do and what they wasn't going to do, that we too today as people of God need to really stand because other people are watching at and lives are changed. If we're keeping the faith and they're seeing what God, and we're not falling out, we're not crying and whining and complaining, but we're trusting in God, people will see that. Okay, so the whole point is to make God bigger than our problems. Do a mind shift. Yes, sir. And then we'll go back there. If I can pick it back just, just a little bit before mom can get ready to speak. Um, when we say we love God, we have now made a declaration to the enemy. And it's just like Job, when, when Satan turned around and, and said, well, wait a minute, if I touch him, you know, you give me permission. When God gave him permission, if we say we love God, Satan is going to get permission from God to come attack, to attack us. But at the same time, there is somebody that's watching us, that's watching how we go through. Mm -hmm. They may not, you may not see them, they may not say anything, but when you go through that trial and you come out, then they're going to know you really serve God. All right, beautiful. I don't know about too bad you didn't hear it like he's going to tell it, but I'll just try to say it. <laughs> you should be in class and you could have heard what he said, how he was saying. Okay, so I don't know if I can remember everything he said, but just be a witness because someone's watching your life. And it's, uh, uh, and it's all to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. And, and just knowing you got the victory, and I can't really say it like he said it because I've already forgotten. I'm getting to you. But... Um, Keep the faith because all oh, he was saying that once you declare, decree and declare that you belong to God, then Satan um, uh, will try to attack you. So Satan brings, he, Satan comes to tempt you so that you will fall and leave God and sin. But God comes to test you to show you what you're made of and what he's going to do for you and you coming out victorious. All right, Sister Mason. Mm-hmm. 
she's saying, let me repeat what she's saying because she said mouthful. Uh, <laughs> that, um, that we will just know that trials and tribulations are going to come. Okay, they're going to come. You don't know when she said they're going to come, so it can take you by surprise. And so, because you don't know. So, the, the key is she was saying that we should, she suggested that we should pray uh, to, and ask God to prepare you for what's coming down the line that you don't know. And then she gave a testimony of herself um, uh, where she had faced her situation where she was paralyzed. And she did, of course, she didn't know she was going to be paralyzed, but how, you know, you pray and stuff and God brought her through and she has the victory on today. But she was saying that you, uh, you can pray and ask God to prepare you. And I want to add to that, that sometimes God is already preparing you for what's coming ahead, right? Because he already knows and he knows what you need. And God, God is good all the time. And all the time, remember that God is good. Yes, ma'am. That's why it's so important. The word tells us to, uh, that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. It is so important to give that testimony all the time. I give my testimony because I know people are encouraging me to do it. Okay. All right, and she's, uh, uh, I'll just said, I'll just said that um, we overcame the word of God, said we overcome by the word of our testimonies. And so that's why it's good to share uh, with other people because they have need of what you have. So the information that we have, the, the things that we're going through in life, are to help somebody else. Right. It's all about others. Yes? Could it not also be said that because of their teaching and their, their background, look, they, they knew of the story of Moses. They knew about the crossing of the Red Sea. They heard of the, of the stories of when God challenged Pharaoh. And in all the plagues that came on the Egyptians did not come upon, the, uh, upon Israel. And they were in the same country. It's, it's like, I, I just use this as, a, as an example. It's like when you look at the Dominican Republic and Haiti, there are, two, there, are, there are two different nations on the same island. Yet, you have an earthquake, a tragedy on one side, but on the other island, it's peaceful. Mm-hmm. And, and just as when God delivered the Egyptians, when God delivered Israel out of Egypt, think about the, at the same time when death came, and the death angel, and yet there was a division with the cross. Everything that happened, there was a division. God has always saved his people. God has never had the righteous suffer with the wicked. All right. So uh, God has never, let's start with that. God uh, is talking about that. First of all, uh, that these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo, uh, have already experienced or heard or read or been told about the prior things that God, the testimonies that God had already done for his people. And so some faith is already there in knowing that God, their God, was God, is God, right? And so he's already, they already knew about the Red Sea, how God divided that up and brought them through and, and, and uh, uh, destroyed their enemies, the Egyptians and all of that. So um, they had some experience on that as well. And then I kind of forgot some of the other stuff he said. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to be truthful with you. But that's why I said, please try to come out here because there's a lot going on. And you will get a better first hand than second hand and third hand. You know how that goes, that story goes. Okay, but I got to speed it up now because it's, it's getting to the end. So we're, at, we're talking about faith again, uh, relying and trusting in God, having the confidence in God, knowing that God will do exactly what he said he will do and know that he will he makes a separation between his people okay got it he makes a separation between his people and the world as he did uh uh for them down in egypt and israel and he do the same for us on today there is a difference and so um he uh went on okay so we're going on talking about faith in the fiery furnace in the midst of your crises and situations uh, to stand. Above all, we're going to stand. Okay, so the last time, so he came to them, and so he acknowledged. He talked to them. Jarak, he's talking to them in the fiery furnace, in the midst of that. Because remember, it's more than one chamber. Back there, I talked about the furnace being more than one chamber. So, of course, he's not in the fiery furnace with them, because he wouldn't be there to talk. All right, so he went to that chamber and spoke to them. He said, ye servants of the most high God. And that's what we want people to see us as servants of the most high God. When we go in as servants and we want to come out as servants of the most high God. And people will see that. 
okay? So then the princes, governors, captains, and all of them saw these men whom bodies the fire had no power, okay? So fire had no power. So we all know fire has power, because just put your little finger near, the, near the, fire, the flames, right? And you'll be there like a few seconds and you pulling it away, if that. So fire has power, but it didn't have the power over there. Our trials may come, they may seem powerful, but it really doesn't have the power that the enemy is sending it to have on us. In other words, because we're going to keep on with God no matter what, right? So it's not going to have the power that the enemy thinks it's going to have over our lives. Nor was a hair of their hair singed. And come on, people, if your hair gets near the fire, you know it's going up, right? Especially with all the hairspray on there, ladies, and stuff on there. It's going down. We're going down. Neither was their clothes, okay? Their clothes, no smell of fire. Now, you know you going in the kitchen, you getting that smell on you. The fire's getting on you. There is no way you going in the fire and it don't have no smell on you unless God is covering us, right? God is covering us. He's shielding us. So we bless, So then he had to let, in the last verse, he said, blessed be the God of Shadrach. Now, I don't know if he was actually really blessing God, but God's name, he said, bless God. It came out of his mouth. I'll go ahead and take it. We bless God. So he blessed God and praised God who sent his angel and delivered his servants. Whether he knew it or not, he was giving uh, uh, acknowledgement to the one, to the God who brought him out, right? Who is able because his servants trusted in him. Key words, because they trusted in him. They kept the faith and they yielded their bodies even unto death. Why? Last part, so they wouldn't serve nor worship any God. So that's what we're going to do. We're not bowing down. And you got to make your mindset, kind of like she said, before you go in, or even when you find yourself in, make your mindset that you going through and you coming out. And no matter what it is, if it costs our life, we still going on with God, right? Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. So he changed his words. Whether he got his life together, that was later on. That's another story. So, But he confessed the worship that, and that's what we want people to see, become to trust the God that we serve. Why? Because he's more than able. All right, so maintain your faith. We're going to go on. But, of course, the choice is yours because God gives us the choice whether we will choose to serve God or not. As Joshua said to the people of Israel, choose you this day whom you're going to serve, whether it's the God of the world, the gods that you're serving and worshiping, and all of that that's going on in the world, or the true and living God. But as for me and my house, Joshua said, what did he say? We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Amen. All right. So that's our lesson on today. We thank God. But we also, if you're listening in and you do not know the God that we're talking about, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So his power has never depleted. He's yet able to bring you through, to carry you through. So we invite you to accept. It's as easy as ABC. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just be believed that he died on the cross. Not only did he die, he was buried. Not only was he buried, but he got up. The Father raised him on the third day and confessed that you were a sinner and in need of a Savior. Why? Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that's me, that's you, that's everybody. All of us have sinned and come short. Just confess, then invite the Lord into your life. You will never, ever be the same. You will never regret knowing God or inviting him into your life. So if you've done that today, we, we uh, call us up. We would be happy to pray for you and um, encourage your walk in the Lord. So find a Bible-believing church that's by you. And if you don't have, and if you're in the Temecula area or somewhere near it, come join us. We'd love to have you at our church. Amen. So we're going to go ahead before we end up next week. Uh, let's see what we got. We are in unit three again on next week. We're still in the winter quarter. And it is faith in times of trouble. Oh, you need to tune in next week because I'm sure you got some trouble. And if you don't, you're probably going to pick some up along the way. So that's uh, faith in time of trouble on next week. So join us on next week. But um, before we close, we're going to go out and um, with prayer. 
And uh, Father, we just thank you on this morning for all of your goodness and your mercy and your kindness unto us. I pray, oh God, that you would bless everyone that's in attendance here, whether in class, on the media, on live stream, Facebook, tuning in by phone, whatever, or will come later on. Bless the households of these people, oh God. Your saints, oh God, continue to take care of them. Those that are sick and afflicted, those that are tired and weary, encourage, oh God, the people of God. Help us to encourage one another, Lord. Strengthen those who need strength, oh God. And we pray, oh God, that you make a way where a way needs to be made. Open a door that has been shut. Encourage somebody to want to give their life to you who doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins. So Father, we thank you for the word of God. We pray that you had a blessing over each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a praise in the temple. Let us enter into morning worship. Oh, please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Okay, we are giving birthday cards to those who had